Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy and today we will be discussing about AWS job oriented projects. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Now if you look at the real time project, so, so these are curated 10 projects. Now again, I want to tell you, you don't need to do all of them. We give you this so that you can write in your CV as an experience saying that you've done these all these project work. Now depending on whether you coming from what background, you might pick two or three, but you have an option to all of them. So begin with uh, first is deployment, three tier deployment or three tier architecture, which is web app and databases. So let's look at one by one these projects. So first you begin with deploying a three tier architecture. Very important if, if you're like me, who have an old style three tier architecture. So this is where you'll be working. You have a database tier in which you store all the data. Then you have an application tier. This is where you put all the application logic, your developers or the, uh, they'll write the code and put it in an application server running application and front ended by your web tier, which is your uh, maybe Apache or HTTP or IIS server and so on front ended by a load balancer. And so you configure this three tier architecture. So we we'll give a scenario and these are the kind of things you'll be asked in the interview as well and say, tell me a little bit more about what project or what kind of a work you were done. So you can say, hey, we had a three tier architecture on premise. We replicated that onto the cloud as well. And then we migrated the entire application from an on-premise to cloud so you can configure. So what you'll be doing, you'll be configuring things like S3 buckets for backup and restore, identity and access management roles. Building this, um, you'll be using things like virtual private cloud, identity and access management roles, Aurora for a database, or you can use RDS, and then EC2 on which you'll be running applications and so on. So you'll be setting all these things in terms of deploying, um, setting up the resources, virtual private cloud, uh, and, and I'll explain you in a minute all these step-by-step -step screenshot with the videos you. So this is how, and now this is where we, I covered those, um, the complete one-by-one -one module with technical skills. This is where you actually, you learn them individually, but now you're building end-to-end -end project using these services. So this is where you have a database tier, we configured a, this is, you see, outer outline, you have a region. Inside that you've configured a VPC. In within VPC, you've configured a subnet, which is a private subnet where you configure two, or in fact, we have configured two regions, which is US West 2 and US West 2B, 2 and 2B. The two different regions. It could be uh, you can do configure them across. Oh, so, sorry. This is a US West 2, one region, and then you have two different subnets within that. You can configure the same thing across region as well. So you can configure one in US West and US East as, as well and so. So you have a database tier across different two uh, availability zones with the RDS relation data services replicating the data. You have an application tier sitting across these two. You have a web tier sitting across two. And then you have a load balancer, which is an application load balancer. And on top of that, you have Route 53 as a DNM, DNS service. So your user will come from here they will forward the request to the load balancer. Load balancer will forward to any of these web servers, which in turn will be forwarding them maybe through another load balancer to the application tier, which in turn will be forwarding that request to the database and so on. So this is a three tier the architecture or web tier we'll be doing. Now, uh, that's one. Again, depending on the role you're playing, you may or you may not want to do it. I'll highly recommend to do that first project. Now, the second project, which is DevOps, which is very important for if you are going for a DevOps kind of a role. And this is where I'm going to teach you the complete high level. We'll keep it high level because we are short on time. So this is a DevOps lifecycle where you have a business analyst. who will be, So this DevOps is nothing but a methodology where or, or not methodology. I would say it's a collaboration between the development operations, multiple teams so that you work more productively, move and develop product or software very quickly. So you have a business analyst who will be writing the stories, who will be writing the requirements. And then once these requirements are approved, then they're going to give it to developer. Developer will then develop these applications. They will store the code or using or write the code or develop using developer tools like Visual Studio, which is very common or Eclipse if you're coming from a development background. If you're not a developer, you can still without any coding language, without any programming, you can still become a DevOps engineer. This is what we're going to teach as well. And, and I'll explain you what all roles you'll be playing in that scenario if you're not a developer as well. So that developer will 
store the data into the code repository and these like maybe on AWS we'll call AWS code commit or maybe git. Then using the CICD pipeline like Jenkins or Azure pipeline in AWS case we'll be using AWS code pipeline where you have a code repository putting pulling the data code commit code review testing code build and deploy using code deploy tool. Now as an ops engineer, so this is the role you'll be doing. You'll be picking and configuring these pipelines and then using any infrastructure as service or infrastructure as a code tools like Terraform or CloudFormation, or if you're coming from an Azure background, ARM templates, you'll be building these infrastructure, which could be your virtual machine, your network, your storage, databases, your Docker, containers, Kubernetes, and you build multiple environments of those, maybe test, dev, prod, etc. And then using the CI CD pipelines, you'll be deploying applications on these as an ops engineer. If you're acting as a test engineer, you'll be deploying these into, uh, you'll be testing these applications across um, these different environments as well. So this is the overall DevOps lifecycle. That is what you'll be playing as a DevOps engineer role. You might be within DevOps team. You might be more on an ops engineer. You might be more on a test side. You might be on a security engineer. You might be as a developer, but then all within the DevOps tool. This is the one, one project you do using CI CD tools on AWS CI CD. You'll be configuring and you're deploying application on Elastic Beanstalk, which is nothing but a web app. And then later in another um, project, we are going to do or configure them in blue green deployment. We'll take it to the next level as well by configuring blue green deployment. So this is how the project work look like. Very extensive. Again, there'll be corresponding videos and then we'll be doing the, you'll be doing it with us. So you understand this creating a continuous CD pipeline, continuous delivery pipeline to deploy a web app with as AWS DevOps and that web app will be on Elastic Beanstalk and then you'll be using Git um, and AWS pipeline, et cetera, as well. So this is whole, you'll be, these services you'll be using and you're setting up the Git, you'll be setting up web application, you'll be building the project and then you'll be doing the CD pipeline, CA CD pipeline as well. Now, this is what I was talking about. You take it to the next level and you do blue-green deployment. Now, for those who don't know what is blue-green deployment, what you have is you have two, you have a, this is typically an environment, you have a live site on which you're running a version one application or version one. You have application load balancer, which is forwarding requests to this. So what you do is, uh, and then you want to test it version two of this application. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a identical duplicate infrastructure of duplicate as it is on a, another environment. Uh, within AWS and it becomes minutes. It, it takes minutes. You'll, uh, depending on the data, you might take probably five, 10 minutes, but it's minutes. You'll be able to replicate the entire environment. And then what you do is then you do blue green deployment where you have this. Um, um, this is I'm talking more about an application point of view rather than data point of view. So data waves will be same, but application you're replicating and you will have multiple versions. You test your testers will test on that. So one will be acting as a blue one will be acting as a green. Once you've tested on green, you switch to the green environment from blue environment. And that is blue green. You'll be able to perform. And that is how you do your build environment mission critical applications. So for that, we are going to use a Fargate, which is nothing but serverless implementation of containers and Kubernetes. So you understand this. So you'll also understand ECS, Elastic Container Service, Fargate and blue green deployment as well. Okay, let's with that, let's move on to the migration part. So this is where you will be learning the complete migration. This itself can earn you, forget about rest all. If you learn migration, that itself will lend you big, big high paying job as well. If you have a migration project, this is where it will be helping you as well. So we have, so this will be acting as a, your corporate data center. There's something called as application servers and you have the, you will be deploying something called as a replication agent so it will do all the analysis as well as the replicating the data. It will be acting as a replicating the data and uh, you're uh, at a block level. It will be replicating and sending it to the staging site on the cloud. So there'll be before, before prior to uh, do this, this agent will be doing all the analysis of what you have on your, on, on your uh, data center. It will all do all the analysis and, and you can build the report and then you build a migration strategy. Once the strategy is done, you start implementing and that is where you have a staging area um, which will be replicating all the data from your on-premise onto this replication server. You also have, you've already built 
that resources in terms of storage, databases, data, entire architecture, and that agent will be continuously replicating, the, replicating both the databases and associated data, as well as application level changes. And once you have tested all these things, you rebuild this whole environment, continuously replicate the data. And once you are ready for cutover, you simply use and, and and point your load balancers or your DNS server onto this cloud as well. It sounds simple. Again, we're going to go deeper. I'll explain you the whole thing. You'll be replicating and you'll be doing lots and lots of labs within this one project itself as well to understand this end to end. So you'll be using application migration service. You'll be using data migration service. You'll be using, um, depending on, you might be doing schema conversion as well of databases as well. So this is extensive and we'll be doing multiple sub. You'll be having an application discovery service. You'll be using Athena as well, depending on if you have the data, depending on type of the applications you have in on-premise as well. So this is uh, being targeted for all migration specialist, architect, etc. as well. Now this is done. If you're a developer, if you have going for more containers and Kubernetes, this is where you'll be learning my, my uh, breaking down or going from monolithic to microservices this will come handy if you have microservices or on the target environment on cloud you're doing containers and kubernetes so what that is you have a big one big bulky application broken down to smaller microservices and you're going to actually break it down to microservices and run those microservices on containers as well so um we'll be setting up a monolithic application we'll break it down in, and using containers um, and then deploy on a containers ECS as well. So big one, uh, Michael, uh, this, this, and we will be going more deep into these topics as well. Now, this project, which is important from a security point of view, like KMS, which is a key management service for TLS SSL certificate as well. So you'll be building the entire certificate management system so that any data which you need to encrypt both um, encryption at rest and uh, or uh, data at rest and securing data at rest and data in transit you'll be configuring these replication certificate managers as well so again whole project as well now um if you are on a website administrator system administrators you'll be will be giving a project on how to host a static website using something called as s3 buckets in block storage briefly touch base you extensively used s3 buckets and you can also build using dynamic websites which changes using something called as lamp stack which is you have a uh, linux apache mysql um, and python or php depending on what you want to do uh, so these databases again all these services right from like um, creating ec2s deploying um, wordpress on top of that uh, linux uh, apache web servers, etc. as well. All those things will be learning on this as well. Now, this is for API gateway and application and databases. If you're more coming from a developer background or data or the API's point of view, we'll be configuring the Amazon DynamoDB at the back end and we'll be using functions, which is Lambda and making sure that the uh, these are secured, protected using identity and access management and front ending, which is API gateway. So again, uh, extensively used in projects, you will be asked about on the project on, on the jobs. So you can write and see this is what you have done. So we'll be deploying a web application interactively using interactively, sorry, using APIs with the database as well. And then for another one is about app application configuration using app config, DynamoDB, Lambda, API Gateway, all those, but this time app config as well on this. Now, this is a complete list of going from a deploying three tier web tier, three tier architecture, web application databases, DevOps, CI CD pipeline, Bruggen deployment, migration from on, -place, on premise to cloud, migration from monolithic to microservices, from security like TLS, uh, SSL certificate, static and dynamic websites, and then API gateways, functions, Lambda, etc. as well. Hey, thank you so much for staying with us till the end of this video. I have something special to share. If you loved our content today, then you are absolutely going to adore what's coming next. We have a free class that's absolutely free. And the best part is it's available for everyone. This class goes in depth into the topics we touched on today, offering you detailed insights, comprehensive explanations, and even some exclusive content that wasn't covered in this video. All you have to do is just click on the link in the description below and you will be redirected to a page like this. Or if you are just starting from fresh, just type a21academy.com slash aws02 and hit enter. Voila! 
Now, this is the class that we are talking about. Now, you can go through all the information that we'll be covering in the class, some customer testimonials, and you can book your seat by choosing the event date, the timing suitable according to you, enter your name, enter your email, enter your phone number, and click on Yes, Save My Seat. You can save this custom URL to join the webinar. And this way, you'll be able to attend the free class on AWS Cloud for Beginners. I promise this is something you don't want to miss. So go ahead, click on that link and step into a world where learning knows no boundaries. Till then, keep enjoying. I'll see you in the next video.